Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Elaine Cha. If you recognize that vibe but can't name the voice, there's good reason for it. The singer behind the mic is someone whose literal name and presence, Mai Lee, are familiar for their place in shaping what and how St. Louisans eat. It's also been some time since she put out a single. But what's clear in Red, Swim, the track we just heard, is that Miley is here. And her new album, Friends, is a testament to who and what's made her the artist she is today. Here to discuss her musical journey and its deep STL roots is singer Miley. Miley, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, because this is something I know people are wondering about, let's get to it straight off. What is the relationship between your name and the name of the well-loved Vietnamese Chinese restaurant here in St. Louis? <laughs> so my Lee restaurant is my is family owned, and my Lee is my mother. <laughs> and um, I actually took my mom's name because I was like, you know, my Vietnamese name is not as cool as yours, you know. And I wanted to continue on her legacy as being the first um, person or you know, just, just having the first Vietnamese and Chinese restaurant open here in St. Louis, mm-hmm. right? So I wanted to be the first Vietnamese, American, R&B, pop star of the whole white world, you know. I wanted to stamp that. So I felt that my mom did a great job, and I feel like I can do the same. Mm-hmm. Now, you've talked about the family restaurant, and with music, too, there are family connections to explore. I read that your parents were in a band yes. in Vietnam. Well, here. Here. So did they play music that has anything in common with what we heard at the top <laughs> of the show? <laughs> no, not at all. They were singing in Vietnamese. And when they immigrated over here from the Vietnam War, they met friends that, you know, in our culture, we sing. You know, we sing anywhere and everywhere. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so they just start singing. And then all of a sudden, every weekend, there was a ba- live band at my house. And I couldn't sleep. You know, and I'm like, aren't you guys tired? You work 12-hour shifts. Like, what? And then, yeah, I just saw them sing. And I was just like, I sing. Both my parents sing. I sing. And I'm like, I just want to pursue it. For real, for real. Yeah, and how did they respond when you told them that that is what you want to, to do? do? Um, in the beginning, they were they were just like, "Are you sure? Like, do you what what do you want to what else do you want to do professionally?" You know, I was like, mm, "Nothing." <laughs> and they've been supportive. They have been supportive, and of, of course, you know, your parents are they just want the best for you. You know, and they were like, "Don't you want to go to college? Don't you want to?" They didn't get a chance to go to college. They didn't get a chance to do much. So they, I know from their perspective, they were like. No, go to college, get a degree. Then after that, you can get a really good job that pays. And I was just like, that's not my life. Mm-hmm. I knew that wasn't my life. Although I did go to community college and I graduated with honors and great grades, everything. I was like, okay, mom. I did it. I am. I did it. I'm not going to go to university. I'm done. See ya. Wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> <laughs> but you have her name, so you kind of do I, want to. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to be her, but in that regards, I just, I loved going to school. I just, it just wasn't for me. I mm-hmm. wanted to pursue music. Now, you've said elsewhere <clears throat> that your older siblings influenced your musical tastes. Yes. How do you remember that happening? Well, um, my sister, well, my brother would listen to a whole bunch of different genres of music, right? He would be listening to rap, R&B, pop, and then my sister would be listening to R&B, pop, and then my dad would be listening to soft rock, and then my mom would be singing Vietnamese all the time. So I'm like, what is going on? I'm confused. (laughs) 
But I combined it all of that, and then I created my own genre mm -hmm. and my own sound. So I know this is going to come off to some, like, man, she's asking that question. But I think it's relevant here because you know where and how a young person grows up can say a lot about the grown-up they become. Yeah. And in the Danny interlude on your album, mm -hmm. there is an answer to this. But please tell us, <laughs> where did you go to high school and how did that shape who you are, especially on this album? So I went to Gateway Tech um, on the south side. And I only went there because my brother went there. Otherwise, I would have gone to a performing arts high school because I went to a performing arts elementary and middle school. Right. So going there, I was take, you know, it was a tech school. So I was doing HTML codes, computer science. I was like, what am I? Am I a nerd? Which I love you guys. I don't I know. No, no shade on you. guys. All love to nerds. Uh, yes, because I'm a nerd <laughs> myself. Right. But I didn't want to be that type of nerd. I wanted to be my own nerd. Um, so having music taken away from me at school and not being able to be creative, I then brought music and arts to the school. I was like, let's get let's get a talent show, let's let's get a, a, a dance show going on. Let's do something because I was so bored um, doing HTML codes all day long. So then, after high school, I wanted to pursue music 100% because, you know, when you have something taken away from you or something that you love, you're gonna want to get it back whether that's a person, a hobby, a career, or whatever. It's like, oh, my God, I, I love music. I'm going to pursue it for the rest of my life. So I have read that this album was 20 years in the making. <laughs> and when I was listening to your Bentley Gucci backpack yes. song mm -hmm. on a drive home one night, it totally took me back to 90s R&B. Is some of that old school vibe part of that 20 year span? So I joke around about saying that this album was 20 years, but um, I technically started recording this album in 2018. And I say that I've been waiting for 20 years because my parents have been waiting for 20 years. <laughs> right? Because, you know, as an artist, you reinvent yourself all, all the time. So they're like, okay, are you okay, is this album done? And I'm like, no, mom, I don't like it. I'm going to start on a new album. She's just like, what is wrong with you? Why didn't you just release that album, right? But um, Gucci Backpack was definitely 90, 90s R&B inspired. The whole album is. I, I fell in love with 90s R&B music. So I wanted to give the fans what I fell in love with, along with adding my own creative genre to it. Mm -hmm. Now, are there certain songs that you used, that you practiced with and performed to perfect your own style? Yeah, like you, you're talking about like other artists? Yeah, other people's. Oh, of course. So of what course. are some of the, some of your top songs for developing, again, your own style of things? Yeah. So growing up, I was obsessed with Mariah Carey and her falsetto, and it was just very soft. So that's kind of where I get my falsetto from. Um, I really love... Aaliyah, Mary J. Blige, um, Brian McKnight. I'm just naming all 90s because that's just what I fell in love with. Now, in today's time, oh, I love Rihanna. I love her, you know, a taste of Drake here and there. You know, you just you just want to have fun with it. So, yes, I, I practice with all of those artists' songs for different reasons. You know, if I want a really high range, I'm going to go listen to <clears throat> Mariah Carey. And, <clears throat> sorry, no, that's okay. <clears throat> all that stuff, but yes. Now, you've got a few singles you've been promoting that come from this album. One of them is Low Ski. Let's take a listen. Okay. Just in the Hennessy, I still feel the energy. Halfway through this show to see you. Last night was wavy, baby. Created animals, how we behave, and we about to 
So this single is decidedly um, intimate. <laughs> One of our producing team called it baby making music, <laughs> and as a mother, I can corroborate. <laughs> so what is it about this track that captures what you wanted to deliver with the whole album overall? So this um, this particular song was so the whole album was produced and written by my producers. Uh, two of them. There's Vega Heartbreak and Brad Young. Both were all from St. Louis, born and raised. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep it in my home uh, town. But normally when I'm in the studio, we don't know where we start off with. We don't know if we're going to start off with the verse or the hook or a melody. Or we just we just don't know. We're just being creative, right? And when Vega came in, he was just like, Brad did the beat. Vega just started humming, getting melodies, and he was like. Ooh, O's and I's. I was like, what the heck is ooh, O's and I's? <laughs> but then we figured out what ooh, O's and I's meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we just added like St. Louis uh, stuff, like right there. Like it's not there, it's right there, right there. It, it was just a fun song to make. And we wanted, yes, it's a very sexual song, but we also want it to be fun mm -hmm. and, and just vibe out with it. You know what I'm saying? We don't want you to feel uncomfortable. We want you to feel good when mm -hmm. you hear the song, you know? And that gets to the point about what makes this you know, St. Louis. So you've mentioned some lyrics. There's Gateway High School, which is in the interlude. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you say growing up and living in <clears throat> St. Louis shows up in the way that you sound? Um, well, you know, it's it's we definitely have a language, you know. <laughs> we have an accent, and it's strong. And I was... I was born, I was pretty much everywhere. I was in U City because of the restaurant. I was in South Side because of school, but then I was on the North Side, and then I was in the South County because that's where we lived at the time. So I'm just kind of like all over the place, and, which is a great thing because I was able to see and, and understand a lot of things as, as a child. So, yeah, that St. Louis is all over the album. I just want people to know where I'm from, how much I gratitude I, I have with being born and raised here mm -hmm. because it's a story. My If it wasn't for my parents escaping the war, my sister, my brother, and myself wouldn't be here and we wouldn't live the life that we live and we wouldn't be able to experience what we live and it's a blessing. We're speaking with singer-songwriter Mai Lee about her debut album, Friends. Friends is almost like two albums in one. Right. There are spoken interlude tracks plus songs. Why did you decide to have people talk about how they know you between the songs? That's that's a good question. Um, well, when we recorded the album, we didn't know we were going to name it Friends and name each song after a friend, right? We were just being creative. After we finished, we all sat down and were strategizing on, okay, what are we going to name it, you know? Uh, I let my friend Red, one of my choreographer, my best friend, one of my best friends, I let him listen to Swim, which is what it was called originally. And he was like, I love this song. I was like, you love it so much that if I name it after you, you'll love it even more. He was like, yeah. And so I named it after him. And after that, I named each song um, a, by a, a, of a friend because of how they make me feel and how they inspired me. So I'm just paying homage to them. And a m majority of my friends are artists, they're singers, they're dancers, they're painters, they're, they do something in the arts. And why not have people know who I am by my friends explaining who I am? And the interludes explain a lot. So that's why when I put them in the booth, I was like, okay, just say whatever you want. And they were like, are you sure? And I was like, I'm positive. <laughs> and they're like, but you sold illegal CDs in high school. I'm like, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that is something that I was wondering about. So, you know, you uh, you did do some entrepreneur entrepreneurial things <laughs> yeah. when you were in high school, and one of the one of those spoken tracks includes a friend who says you were making mix CDs that cost a few bucks more yes. than the standard standard mixes. Yes, right? absolutely. Why did yours sell so well? Well, okay. I would I would buy these specific gold c CDs, and I would write my name on it. And every week, my friends would be like, "Okay, I need a new mix CD so I can ride around in the car with my boyfriend, or I need a new CD so I can ride around in the car with my girlfriends while we're going out." 
like I, I, I put a lot of love into it because I would create and make CDs myself. So I know how they would want it and how they would feel when they listen to it. And I would put them in order as to how I felt. And those sold more. Like I literally was the only one doing that in school. And they were like, Miley, we need it. We need five CDs this week. I'm like, yes, I'm going to make some money. <laughs> and you had some fortune cookies as well. Yeah. Okay. So at that time, like I'm just watching my mom being an entrepreneur, you know? So I'm like, okay, if she's selling French fries, fried rice, and egg rolls for this amount, I'm just going to grab a whole box of fortune cookies. She won't know. <laughs> I'm going to sell them two for 25 cents, you know? So I would sell CDs, fortune cookies, and whatever I had at that time to make some money because I just needed to make a living, mm -hmm. take care of myself. So there's obviously heart in this, and it sounds like each song then is like a, a mini dedication. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, no matter how good anything is, if, it, if it's something that no one knows exists, then it will not be appreciated, at least not fully. Right. And then you've talked about what you've observed your family doing, your mom in particular. You know, how has that understanding of business been part of what you have done with this album? Well, I, my, my number one fan, or like the person I look up to is my mom. So I, I literally watch everything she does. And my dad too, but... I watch everything they do, and I'm just inspired. So if you guys see me selling CDs or, like, practicing as hard as I can, um, it's because of them. I used to halfway do things, halfway have rehearsal, halfway sing, because I was letting fear get in the way, right? Mm -hmm. um, my parents didn't let that get in the way. They, they had no choice. They just did it with no regards and just prayed that they would make it, and that's my outlook on things now. Um, I know who I am as a woman now. I know who I, I am as an artist. It's taken me a very long time to get here. I did let fear get in the way, and sometimes fear comes back. You know, it's a normal, natural thing, but I conquer it very quickly versus a year or so ago when I would just let it affect me for two days. Now it just affects me for like two minutes, you know? <laughs> so now you have this, it's this confidence that is different from before mm -hmm. um, and you are performing on your own yes if you could open for any r&b or pop artist past or present who would that be oh my god past i would say michael jackson present i would say i'll have three people i would say janet jackson rihanna and drake yeah. Yeah, and why those three? Um, they form who I am. Like, Janet is, like, a dancer, performer. She's everything. Her fan base is everything I wanted to be. Her presence, her what she contributes, and her message, that's me, you know? Um, Rihanna, the same. And Drake, that's my alter ego. So <laughs> 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 why not? <laughs> Miley is a St. Louis native and Vietnamese-American R&B pop singer who released her first full-length album, Friends, in October. You can catch Miley live at Del Mar Hall Friday, December 30th. Tickets are available on Ticketmaster with a VIP option that includes meeting Miley and dinner from the restaurant's Miley and Noodle House. Uh, I can't promise fortune cookies but there might be some. <laughs> I might I will make sure that there will be some maybe <laughs> <laughs> Miley thanks so much for being with us thank today. you so much for having me I had a blast St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio thank you for listening I'm Elaine Cha This episode was produced by Maya Norfleet. Our audio engineer is Aaron Doerr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. This podcast was mixed and edited by Aaron. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. 
podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations and leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.